Hello, good evening students. So today we are at part two of our video. And if you've not seen part one, I would strongly recommend that you please go to part one, watch that part of the video to make more sense out of this session. So today we have Mr. Vivek Aditya again with us. And today he is going to walk us through CMA and how to tackle different stages of CMA. So welcome Vivek once more. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, ma'am. It's a pleasure to talk to the students through this channel. Yes. So in our last session, we had talked about the different stages of CMA. Now, please uh, guide them that how to tackle each stage and we'll talk in depth about it. Absolutely. Ma I'll just uh, share a small presentation. Yeah. So like we saw in the last session, we have uh, three levels of the course. The first one is the foundation. The second one is the intermediate level, and then you undergo a practical training for a period of one and a half years, and then you have the final exams, and then you're done. You have your first job in your hand. So that let's see what is the foundation level all about. So the foundation level is both an objective and descriptive exam. So it's like uh, just like what you do in school. So it's a three-hour exam for each paper, and you have to write four papers. So basically one is about economics and business studies, which you study in your class 12. And then you have a paper on mathematics and statistics. And if you think, you know, you're from a background where you have not studied uh, max in class 12, it is very important for you to spend some time on this subject because it can become tricky since after class 10 for two years, you've not studied math, you might find it difficult. So it's very important to pay attention to the subject because it will be something new for you and something that you have not been in touch. And the third subject is fundamental of law and ethics. So here you're going to be studying a basics of uh, company law. Again, something that will be new to you. And when I say ethics, it's about corporate governance. So that will also be something new to you. So this subject also, you can probably pay a bit more extra attention and fundamentals of accounting, I'm sure all the commerce students, you would have studied this subject for two years in your class 11 and class 12. So for those of you from our CBSE or ICSE background, it will be very easy for you. You might have already studied all the concepts in your school. So it's just going to be an application of those concepts at this exam. So uh, talking about the registration fees, it's around uh, 6,000 for the foundation exam and for applying for the exam is your class 12 mark sheet. So if you remember, we had said that you can enroll for this course as soon as you complete class 10. Whereas for writing the exam, you need your class 12 mark sheet. And then uh, the registration date, again, this is something very important. If you're someone who plans things uh, in advance, you have to keep in mind that for the June exams, 31st January is the deadline and for the December exams, 31st July is the deadline. So ideally, if you're planning to write foundation after your class 12, uh, it's ideal that you write it in December because you have to get your mark sheet and then submit it to be eligible to write the exam. So you can plan your exam in the month of December. So you will be having six months time to prepare for the exam. Right. I have a question here. Now, when you said that the exam is objective as well as detailed, so is there any negative marking also in that? No, ma'am. There is no negative marking across all the levels. So okay. it's just like how you do your uh, CBSE exams. Okay. You get rewarded for the answers that you write. And each question carries its own marks, like one marks, three marks, four marks. So you have a specific set of marks for each question and there is no negative marking. Right. Thank you. So uh, what next after that? Yeah, so once you're through your foundation level, you register for your intermediate level. So foundation level is very easy for uh, the school students because they are constantly in touch with the subjects and most of these are subjects that they've already studied. So when it comes to intermediate level, you have to be a step up in terms of your planning for the exam because you also have to think about uh, taking coaching because uh, some of these subjects are very new to you. 
so it's always good to have a helping hand in your preparation so the first thing that you have to do is obviously enroll for the exam that's when you get your study materials from the institute like i said earlier you can opt for the two methods either the postal method or the oral coaching method so if you opt for the postal method you get your books and then you can plan your studies and at the same time one of the most important aspect here is to uh, fix on the coaching institute in advance because from my experience what i have seen is our students tend to pick different institutes for different subjects because uh, some institute can be very good for one subject and the other institute can be really good for a different subject so sometimes uh, students tend to go to different institutes for learning each subject so if you're someone who's like that i really urge you that you plan it in advance like if you're registering and you have some time before you receive the materials just plan out your coaching if you're going through the oral method there's no problem because you'll be going to the institute for all your classes but if you're someone who prefers uh, the postal method i definitely urge you to spend some time on preparing your uh, coaching plan right and then uh, briefly we'll touch upon the subject i don't want to go too much into the nitty gritty details of the subjects but i want to give you a fair understanding of what you will be encountering at the intermediate level so the first uh, block if you see it's all about cost accounting so costing is nothing but uh, whatever the money that you're spending on developing a product or a service whatever money you are spending on that that is usually referred to as cost so there are so many aspects that you need to manage about costs like uh, you know how much is the raw material cost how much is the operating cost all of that needs to be managed so you will be introduced to those concepts at this level so it is just a elementary introduction to those concepts and then the next one is strategic management so this will be an extension of something that you have studied in your commerce at class 12 so you already studied business studies so adding a bit of strategy to that uh, business concepts that you already know that will be your strategic management and then law and ethics you have already seen it at foundation level again here this it will be an extension of that let's say you studied uh, one or two laws in your foundation exam so here you will be encompassing on more laws so you will be expected to have an extended knowledge of those laws and then direct taxation indirect taxation so direct taxation is basically your income tax i'm sure uh, all of you must have seen your parents paying their income taxes so you'll be studying that here you will understand how the income tax is calculated what are the various sections how do you arrive at the taxable income all of that will be covered in direct taxation and in indirect taxation it's all about gst today because gst has replaced uh, multiple taxes that was prevailing earlier so you'll be covering gst you'll be covering customs which is for import import whenever you import or export uh, service a custom duty is charged i'm sure you'll know it so you'll be studying that and of course excise duty so these are something that you'll cover in indirect taxation and in audit it's about both cost audit as well as management audits so people keep doing things right so let's say a business is run but you have to see if everything is running correctly somebody has to monitor that right so that is what audit is all about it's like confirming that things are happening according to the set standards so you will be introduced to the world of auditing uh, being an internal auditor myself i'm sure you'll love this subject because it will so much more deepen your knowledge and you can learn so many business aspects which might not be covered in you know the cost accounting part of it the business process side and then financial accounting and company accounts again this is something you will have studied in class 12 but you will be expected to have a bit more advanced knowledge uh, you know more concepts will be learnt and uh, about the intermediate level overall it will be like uh, if someone is doing their bcom exam and they are pursuing their cma course side by side you can expect that your third year of bcom and the intermediate level exam will be at the same level that is just for a comparison 
So if you're doing your BCom, you don't have to worry about your third year. If you pass your CMA inter, that is given. So you will get good marks in your third year if you clear your intermediate exams. And then uh, something more important here is having a strategy for revision. For the revision, I want to interrupt here. I have uh, two questions to ask. One is yes, uh, that okay. in these subjects, you categorize them into group one and group two. So is right. it compulsory to clear all the exams of group one in one go and clear all the exams of group two in one go or you can clear as and when it comes your way? Absolutely. Thanks for asking that question. I think I missed out on that. It's a very, very important question because uh, in the professional course, uh, there is something called as aggregate and individual pass mark. So usually 40% of the marks is considered as a pass mark for an individual subject. That is the common practice across all the exams. So there is no uh, problem in that same concept here. You need to secure minimum 40 marks to pass an individual paper. But if you have to pass a group, you need to secure 50 percentage in aggregate. So or what I mean by that is uh, if uh, you're writing four papers uh, totaling up to 400 marks, you need to secure at least 200 to be declared pass in that particular group. OK, so you so have both the options, right? My understanding is that you've got both the options. Either you pass individual paper at a time or you pass the whole group. Am I right? No, no, it doesn't work like that. So right. what happens is if you're taking the group one, yeah. you have to pass all the four papers of the group and you also have to secure 50 percentage. Okay. So if supposing you've got 40 percent somewhere, then in the second paper, you got to get 60 to reach the average of 50. Exactly. All so right. overall, across all the four papers, you need to secure at least 200 marks on 400. So it can be however. So let's say you get 40 in one paper, you get 70 in the other, you get 40 in the third, and then you get 80 in the fourth paper, you would still be over 200 and declared pass. But right. if you get 40, 50, 40, 50, you would have not passed the exam because your score is still below 200. So then in that case, you write all the papers, all the four papers again? Uh, no, there is one uh, rule of uh, exemption here. So let's say that you get above 60 marks in one exam. So you will be granted something called as an exemption. So in exemption, what you can do is, uh, suppose you have not cleared the other papers and you are not uh, declared pass for that particular group, group during the exam. Whenever you write the exam the next time, you can carry forward your marks or you can eliminate that paper from the group. Uh, I'll give more clarity. Let's say that uh, in cost accounting, you have secured 65 marks. However, due to other reasons, you are not able to pass that group. Either you failed the paper or did not get an aggregate. So let's say the next time you are writing the group one again, so what happens is you can either remove that paper, like out of four, you can take only three for the exam or you can get a carry over. Whatever marks you scored earlier, that can be carried over and it will be taken as an average of all the four paper. However, you will not be writing that exam. So this is how the rule of exemption works now. Right. Got it. So once you've removed cost accounting, it has been exempted. You still got to write your strategic management, financial accounted, Correct. laws and ethics. And the Correct. marks of cost accounting can be carried forward and the average can be worked out based on the three new subjects that you've written, three new exams that you've written, plus the old marks of cost accounting. Am I Absolutely. Correct? Correct. Right. Absolutely. You. You're right. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So we Great can now. move on to revision now, right? Yeah. So uh, revision is something very important because uh, the problem with uh, the professional course is the volume of things that you have to learn. So uh, each subject in itself will contain a lot of different sub areas. So you need to spend a lot of time in understanding them. So the biggest challenge for all the students is 
how do they revise so the ideal plan is to first find out what are your strengths and weaknesses because when you go to the exam you'll always have something called as a choice right you can always pick between two questions and answer the questions so the best solution is to look at all the past exam question papers and find out what is the pattern of questioning where am i having this choice of answering between two areas and then first figuring out which is your stronger area and which is your weaker area so once you do that you can focus all of your energies on the areas where you are strong so that when you go to the exam you will be sure that okay out of 100 marks 60 marks i am very strong and the balance 40 marks is something that i'll be working on during the exam so if you have that kind of confidence before you go to the exam you're sure to succeed in the exam because once you get 60 that's more than enough for you to manage the other subjects even if you don't you know cross the group you still get an exemption so 60 is like that magical figure that you should be really focused on but it's not that uh, you have to focus on getting only 60 i'm just telling that that's a very good benchmark to have before you go to the exam you yeah. can also attend a lot of mock test and see how much you score a lot of uh, resources are available on the website you have revision test papers you have uh, practice test papers you have mock test papers so you can make use of all these resources in your exam preparation right vivek yeah and then of course uh, something again now uh, important here is uh, the pattern of exams so if you look at it uh, if you're writing both the groups this is for people who are writing both the groups what happens is you have one paper from group 1 on the first day and you have another paper from group 2 on the second day so it's like you have eight continuous days of exams Uh, mind you this is only for people who are writing both the groups together if you are writing only one group you will have one day gap between each of the paper but if you are writing both the groups together you will have one paper from group 1 and the next day you have one paper from group 2 so the biggest uh, you know concern for students is how do i revise so that's why i said having a revision strategy is very very important because you're just going to be fully exhausted after writing an exam for 3 hours and then you come back home take some rest by the time it will already be late in the evening so you really need to have a strategy of what will you study just the day before exam and last minute preparation will not really help you because you don't have that time to do it so always study something and make sure that you revise only that much before the exam don't uh, you know dwell into something which you have not studied earlier so have a strong revision plan keep your mind completely focused and you're sure to succeed right that's very important that you brought out it's going to be really rigorous now i have another question so if they choose yes. students choose to write say uh, hypothetically only group 1 exam so when do they write group 2 after 6 months then yes so if you write one group in june you can write the other group only in december so that's how the cycle works you can write either both the groups or if you write one group you can write the next group only in the month of uh, december or june however it works based on your cycle right so, so i think uh, the intermediate uh, is something that will be new to most of the students the topics will be new but uh, something i can assure you is that if you put in enough efforts and you have a good revision plan you will definitely succeed you don't have to worry about the percentage of people passing or your uh, reviews from your seniors none of that matter if your preparations are really good right that's very important they need not look at those uh, disheartening statistics and focus right. on their work that's very important <laughs> absolutely ma'am so now we are through to the intermediate level let's assume that we have cleared intermediate level that brings us to the exciting part of uh, training so here i have split it into two parts one is uh, the hands on training which is provided by the institute of cost accountants of india 
and the other one is your practical training which you undergo with your principal that is the cost accountant so first let me cover the hands on training so what is it about why do you need hands on training you anyway go to a practical cost accountant how am i going to benefit out of this so what is important here is that it's not just about uh, you know the hard skills that you learn the technical skills the soft skills are also very very important to be a successful professional in today's world so a certification from cambridge in terms of communication and soft skills it's really going to make you into a well rounded individual who doesn't only have the technical skills but also the required communication skills to convey whatever technical knowledge that you have in a very professional way to the management so that is something very very important and i am very glad that the institute is offering something like this and you still have two more certifications one is sap so sap is uh, the market leader in terms of uh, the erp platform so you get to understand the finance user roles how what are the functions that are available in sap how is it configured all of that is provided through an sap certification and that's not all excel is the mother of all business applications so that is also covered when you go to a microsoft certification so all these three certifications together they take care of the soft skill side of your uh, profile and when it comes to the hard skills or the technical knowledge this is where your practical training comes into picture so for one and a half years you will be closely working with a cost accountant so you will be exposed to the various engagements that they do be it audits or be it some management consulting or be it some accounting advisory that they are doing you get to be a part of all that so you build up your technical knowledge here whatever you are learnt in inter you get a chance to apply it and understand the concepts better uh, this is something very important because in your final exam it's more application oriented right. so intermediate is more knowledge oriented but the final exam is application oriented so whatever practical exposure that you get here it will come in very handy during your final exam and we'll look at it shortly why it is so important and other than that you also get industry exposure say your auditor is doing a manufacturing audit of a company an automotive company let's say maruti suzuki so you get to understand the business model of maruti what do they do how is their business structure all of that so that's something very important a practical understanding of a particular industry so that you get when you go for the practical training overall you will also be learning how do you communicate with people from the industry let's say you have meeting with a manager of that company so how do you present yourself how do you address them how do you talk to them so all of this exposure you're getting even before your first job so that when you go to your first job you're already a very well rounded professional with both the soft skills as well as the technical skills so now we we are left with the final level so we have completed inter we have undergone our uh, practical training and we are finally at the final level so the final level is a bit tricky Uh, when i say tricky i don't mean that it's uh, very difficult to pass what i mean to say is that you are tested on different levels so i have listed it down here so you need to have knowledge knowledge in the sense a very good understanding of the theory aspect so you need to have a good grip over all the laws all the section all the formulas all the concepts so you need to have a very good understanding of that and next comprehension so it's not just about understanding the knowledge what does it mean or how do you apply it those two are covered under comprehension and application and then analysis synthesis and evaluation so what happens here is you are provided with practical case laws you are you are being given a situation and you have to analyze that situation and answer the questions so that is something that is introduced newly at the final level you don't have these kind of questions at the intermediate exam so in the final exam you are expected to apply your knowledge it's not enough if you just uh, you know uh, learn everything and just go and write an exam you have to understand how do you apply those concepts 
how do you compare and contrast between two situations or let's say you are given a lot of a financial management question where you are given lot of information so you have to analyze which information is useful for the problem that you have in hand because you will be provided all the information and some of them might not be even relevant to the problem so you have to analyze and pick up the required information and then go ahead with solving the problem because that's how it works in the practical world as well right okay. you have so much information and you need to be a good uh, with your decision making if you want to be a good manager so that is what is tested here and then touching upon the subject it is completely the same as intermediate level again uh, you are expected to have an application knowledge you are not introduced to anything new or uh, something that is new here is in terms of the business valuation and the strategic performance management so these exams are not uh, covered these subjects are not covered in your intermediate exams so business valuation is nothing but uh, you must have heard of all the startups right the uh, 1 billion 2 billion startups uh, the paytms so how are they valued how do you value a business that is what you learn in business valuation and then strategic performance management is all about the management concepts that help a business perform better so let's take an example of tqm tpm six sigma all of these are quality management principles so uh, you also have operations management like um, linear programming transportation problems so all of these help a business perform better so as a professional you will be applying these in your work once you join your first job so you learn all these exciting things here and uh, the registration fees for the final level is uh, 25000 i put it there and uh, everything else is the same as intermediate there is no change with respect to that uh, you know process of preparing for the exam you need to find a good coaching center you need to have a good revision plan and again you need to be very sure of how you are going to cover the syllabus just before the exam so all of that remains the same there is no change in that and uh, one more thing that i want to bring up is uh, immediately after you pass the intermediate exam you can register for the final so you'll be getting the materials you don't have to wait you will also be having one and a half years time to prepare for the exam because you will be undergoing training and then you will be writing your final exams so please plan in such a way that you are able to devote time both for your work and also for your studies that that way you will be able to cover both in a very good manner and come out successfully right so that involves a lot of commitment i think and a lot of hard work i mean that mental, mental make up of commitment has to be there only then i think students will be able to go through this rigorous programming right. absolutely if you remember we had put one class saying that uh, they have to be willing to work hard to be a right fit for this program yeah so it's very important to have that mindset i think ma'am pointed her very rightly because it's not something that you just you know sit uh, one month before the exam prepare and go right it is a very rigorous course so you have to consistently keep putting in those little effort every day and the results will pay off on the day of exam so i think there is one more thing the most uh, important piece of it uh, the placements so uh, obviously you will have something called as a pre placement training which is like a 12 days intensive program where you are prepared for the placements this is outside the training which is already provided to you during the course of your inter and final so uh, like i said this is more of industry professionals coming and interacting with the students let's say on soft skills or some technical skills preparing your resume all of that is taken care of here the small details which will help you you know do your placements really well and the next question companies so who are the companies coming in for placement so if you look at the here you have pwc you have coca cola tvs infosys reliance hero itc so all the big companies that you can think of they come in for the placements and you have an equal chance of getting in all it matters is your skill your commitment and your drive to get your first job but it doesn't stop there let's say that you have an entrepreneurial drive inside you 
you want to start your own company you want to offer your own consulting you have an option there you can choose to become an entrepreneur so like like i've listed down here these are some of the illustrative services that uh, members who are in practice offer like cost accounting services auditing you know erp consulting process analysis or implementing a bi system so there are so much opportunities for you and statutorily only a cost accountant has the right to perform a cost audit so there is always a scope for you where you are given a sole right to perform something so there is always a market for that sky is the limit guys once you decide to go into your entrepreneurial journey though initially it would be difficult for you to get your first set of clients or get into the first milestone of your business but once you settle down sky is the limit all the, it all depends on your talent your hard work your commitment and how much you are willing to go the extra mile to help your client so i'm sure everybody watching this video who wants to do cma will come out with flying colors just make sure that you are consistent and you put in the right amount of efforts wonderful thank you so much uh, thank, thank you so much and the pleasure is mine